In this screencast, I'll talk a little bit about the change management and change leadership. So I often get asked, where would you start? So I've developed a, a number of tips here, I think, and this screencast will look at tips numbers one to five. So number one, must be driven by trustees as well as leadership. You're about to move into a different way of teaching that most teachers and parents don't fully understand the potentials, benefits and risks of. So when you do get going, you need the backing of your principal, your leadership team and your board. Your leadership defines your vision, people will align with it and inspire them and give some urgency to the change. Number two, so related to the golden circles which appears in different screencasts. So your school's vision for teaching and learning must come first. Uh, in our own school, we have our vision. It also includes things like our learner qualities. That is critical. You can't put the cart before the horse. Number three, be strategic and have a plan. Your systems are vital. Uh, the main thing is, the, is keeping the main thing the main thing. Knocking walls out without fully doing the groundwork into the vision around teaching and learning is unacceptable and dangerous. These are just some of the things that we've uh, done as a staff um, along our journey and done a lot of work there. Um, so this for us is our, is our how and our why before moving into the what. Again, that golden circles thinking. Number four, feed the hungry. Aim for the early majority. These will be your movers and shakers and the ones that are really keen to either develop innovative learning environments, change the, their whole mindset around teaching, perhaps the ones that want to work in a collaborative team. Feed those ones. There will be these others here. It talks about the chasm here between then your early majority that will eventually come on board, your late majority that might want to see it first before they move, and your laggards down here. Don't worry too much about those ones just yet. And I say there, don't water the stones. Make your decisions on what your best people think. Jim Collins talks about putting the right people in the right seats on the bus. Um, in a New Zealand setting, so here actually some of our staff jumped on our bus way more quickly than what I anticipated. So I felt like I had to sort of run after them and catch up to the bus. Uh, that was a good problem to have. Probably in a New Zealand setting too, uh, a walker analogy is is potentially better than the bus. And in the bus, you've got someone at the front driving. You might still have a few people sitting down the back seat, not fully involved. Whereas on a walker, you need everyone pedalling in the same direction and on board. Um, so you don't just have one or two key drivers or, or two or three people in the front seats. Tip your toe on the water. Uh, for our staff, I said... In, to do with collaborative teaching, um, feel free to just dip your toe and give things a go or also express an interest in those that wanted to go the whole hog. In reality, most of them have all moved down this area pretty quickly. Um, but don't overthink it. No paralysis by analysis. Need to get in there, even if you just dabble in it to start off with. And tip number five. Do your research. It's not a social experiment. Um, hopefully this website will provide you lots of useful resources for your thinking as well. Thank you.